Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of A Gardener's Journey Homestead. I am Barbara. Thank you for stopping by today and welcome to my tunnel. So we're gonna go inside today and take care of just some maintenance things um, and just get the tunnel in a good state to start fresh in the new year. So for those that are brand new to me, I'm in the state of Tennessee in zone 7B. And um, on this channel, we talk about everything uh, from a home setting perspective in terms of gardening, cooking from scratch, doing things in the kitchen, and also preserving food. We um, live on about 75 plus acres of land. We have a hot tunnel, we have an in-ground garden space, and then we also have some raised beds behind our house. Uh, we don't have any livestock or anything like that. We just have two dogs. We had two cats, but they're no longer here. Um, but that's us in a nutshell. And in terms of my gardening journey, um, this I have been gardening for three years, so still very much a newbie. And on this channel, my goal is to inspire you to grow food and just simply take you through on my journey as I'm learning uh, my mistakes, my successes, my wins, and really just to all build a community where we're together growing food and encouraging and inspiring each other. Sometimes gardening can be lonely if you're the only one in your circle or in your family that does gardening. But I hope that when you come to this channel, you feel supported, you feel motivated, and you feel inspired. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna go in the tunnel, we're gonna water um, everything again. The temperatures, right now it's like 60 degrees outside, but it's really warm in the tunnel because I'm telling y'all, without the shade cloth, it gets really warm in there and the plants get way more sun than they ever have in the fall when the shade cloth was on. So. We're gonna water and then we're also gonna fertilize and then i'm also gonna like take up all the things that um have been um decimated by the animal that we've been dealing with so an update on the animal at the time of this video we have not caught any more animals since the last video so it's been about 48 hours we've had the trap set and nothing has been caught i think i'm gonna leave it another week or so just to see if they come back out if there's more and all of that um, and then I'll feel comfortable after a week or so that maybe we got them all indeed. If you did not see our videos from before, uh, we've been dealing with an animal that we think is either a vole or a rat, jury to be decided on which one it is. Um, but you can see those um, previous two videos where we showed what we caught and what we've been dealing with. Um, so hopefully that is behind us, but I'm gonna go in and clean up all the stuff that has been destroyed and it's just you know sitting there just so that it gives it a more i don't know clean look water and fertilize and then um i'll be out of town um after christmas and so then when we come back in the new year we can start fresh so come on let's go in the tunnel so the first thing i'm gonna do is just clean out all the dead debris plants have been decimated that's what you see me doing here is just doing that part first okay i got everything that's not alive and well cleared out i had to go up to the house and change into a shirt because it is hot in here it's like 105 degrees and that sweatshirt i couldn't even work with that on so i had to go in the house and change clothes so yes it's still the same day so i got everything cleared out and even though it looks, oh, I see one that I missed. Um, broccoli rob that's going to, um, that has gone to seed. Maybe I'll just leave that there and try to collect the seeds. Although my broccoli rob experiment didn't go well. I have, I didn't harvest any of the broccoli seed and they didn't eat the broccoli rob. It's just that it went to seed like very quickly. And somebody was saying, you know, I needed to harvest sooner. Well, there was really nothing to harvest, but a stem and a leaf. Like there was like one little bitty broccoli shoot and that was it. So I'm not quite sure if maybe I'll try it again. I'm not sure if I did it right, did it wrong because I've never done it before. So let me know if you've done broccoli rob. But I have everything cleared out and even though it looks sparse is probably too strong of a word. Is everything is not full like I'm used to in terms of my beds. But it makes me feel better coming in here knowing that what is left is alive and well right now and I'm not coming in and seeing all the damage over and over and over. It just does something to my psyche. Like I don't I don't like it. <laughs> I know I left the kale because I know the kale is going to come back and it's already coming back. I did a big harvest on it yesterday. So I'm not concerned about that. But like the broccoli had been like completely eaten, the cabbage, all of that stuff, I don't think it's going to re regrow, 
redo. It was completely decimated. So I just got it out of here. So that way I don't have to keep looking at it every time I come in my tunnel. So um, I've had some questions about, am I going to replace the soil since I had rat bowls? Is There's a, you know, I don't know which one it was. I'm not really sure. When I've looked it up, it could be either one. The size of the tail can vary. I don't know. But especially if it's a bowl, when I looked it up, there was nothing that I found. Um, and I typed it in all kinds of ways about soil being contaminated or having to change your soil if you have a bowl. If, um, what I did find is that bowls aerate the soil, kind of like ants and things like that. So, you know, ants are not bad for the garden. They're just a nuisance. They aerate the soil. And that was the same thing I was seeing about the voles is that they aerate the soil, um, yada, yada, yay. But I didn't see anything, I mean anything, about them contaminating the soil that you should change your soil if you have a vole. So, if you have read something or have some guidance, please, my email address is in the bio, send me an email with an article, research, or something. Um, if for some reason you have personally had a vole and you had some repercussions because you didn't, let me know. Um, so I haven't made a decision on whether or not I'm going to, and if I did change the soil, I would only change the soil in the bed where we caught the four and then, which is where the carrots were. And then in the bed behind me where we caught two, the other ones like kind of along the way. Um, none of the other beds where I put traps, have we caught anything as of yet? And I think, um, again, yeah, that's kind of where I am. So the jury's still out. I will deal with that in the new year but i'm gonna do something in the new year um i didn't get a chance to go look and see if there were any transplants available but if not then we'll direct so or start our own seeds or we'll do something um to just and if i need to regroup i'll do that too but for today i just want to kind of get it cleaned up watered fertilized and let's see what happens over the next week or so while I'm gone. So I'm gonna go turn the water on and water and then also get ready to fertilize. Okay, y'all, I was finishing up watering, just about done, and then I see something that, I'm not sure what it is. I'm gonna turn the camera around and let you see it as I pull it. Y'all see that purple looking? thing right there I have no idea I was watering I'm like what is that huh y'all look at this I have no idea what that is it's not anything that I planted it's purplish it's split you can see that and I'm like would this be an eggplant that I planted in the summer? Or it almost looks like a radish, but y'all, I didn't plant it. I don't know what that is. Look at that. And the um, the leaves are different because this, this row is where my collard greens are. So again, I don't know what that is. I just saw something purple and I'm like, what is that in my collard green row? And I haven't... Again, mysterious things happen in the garden. It's not anything I've planted before. The only thing I planted purple was fairy tale eggplant back in the summer, and y'all know that was not successful. Um, the radishes I planted were red, so mystery. I have no idea. It's amazing to me how those things happen, and it bothers me because I don't know what it is. I've had things come up. Remember one time I was out here about a month or so ago, and I had some mustard greens growing, but that made sense somewhat because I had done mustard greens in that bed two years ago and didn't make sense they were coming back now. And I've had potatoes like re come back up after I've harvested and all that, but I have no idea what that is. That is the, that's mystery, <laughs> mystery in the garden. But anyway, I got everything watered. I'm going to fertilize now. These um, things in the garden have not been fertilized since before we went to Australia. So it's been almost, I would say six weeks to eight weeks. Y'all know in the summer, I fertilize every single week. And that's my goal during the fall as well, at least every two weeks. But I haven't been doing it. So just so you know, you're not the only one <laughs> that sometimes. And it's so funny because this is a much slower pace than the summer. 
but I fertilize less. But that's neither here nor there. I feel like the plants just need a boost. I feel like they've been through some rough terrain, rough waters. I know I feel just like, man, this has been rough this last month or so. And as I'm out here just like looking at it and it's not in this ideal state, I'm having to continually tell myself like, don't worry about it today. It seems overwhelming today about restarting and will it happen again? And like all the what ifs and all that like negative thoughts and energy. I'm having to tell myself, put that on the shelf, get rid of it. Don't think about that today because today you're not going to reseed. Today you're not going to replant. Enjoy the holiday. Let the new year come in and maybe you'll feel better and have a new attitude when you're stepped away from a while. And I say that because I want to present real information. And what I mean by that is I always, as much as possible, I try to be very authentic and transparent on my channel because I feel like I'm not the only one that have those thoughts. I'm not the only one that could be going through something. And sometimes you just get discouraged. Sometimes you're just disappointed. And sometimes you just don't have the energy to restart. Like where I am today, I'm like, do I really want to do all this over? Like, should I just wait till the summer? Like, I'm just kind of blah. <laughs> That's the real truth, y'all. That is the real truth. And it seems today, it seems overwhelming to think about restarting. Even though I'm not doing it today. But just the thought that I need to do it, want to do it, got to do it. But, you know, sometimes you have those moments. And I think sometimes it's just good to step away and tell yourself, you don't have to worry about that today. You can pick that up another day. So, whoever that may help. I hope it helps you. Let's get our fertilization going on and then we're going to wrap this up and be done. So I always, always do ultra. That is the prebiotic that I use every single time, um, every single week. It is a great, great product by Agrigo. I've talked about it many times before, so I won't belabor that point um so definitely giving some of that i'm also going to do rev which i just started using this this is probably my third or fourth time using it i like it when i um when i fertilize my plants before i left for australia remember we took the shade cloth off i fertilized really good and um Yikes, got on my hand. Um, we fertilized really good and I felt like it did a really good job that when I came back, my plants, y'all saw them, they were like gangbusters. They were doing so good. So Rev is like an organic growth stimulant. Um, it's a concentrate, you just add it to water. It has a whole bunch of good stuff in it and you can go to Rev.com to get that. Then we're gonna do some fish emulsion, worm castings, whatever you want to call it. I mean, fish emulsion. And then we're just going to add some water to this. And then we should be good to go. I think that's all I'm going to do today. Yep. I think that's all I'm going to do today. Okay, y'all, it is done. The temperature 
has started to cool off for sure. So it's watered, it's fertilized. I got 95% of all the dead stuff as I was watering. I saw a couple of more things that could be pulled, but I'm at a time limit. So I'm gonna have to go, we'll just leave that. Um, and I'll be back out here before we gotta go out of town in a few days um, anyway, and I can pull them then. So thank you guys for joining me today. I needed some company <laughs> in the garden. This was not like the sexy stuff but it was the necessary stuff just to clean up. You know, I feel like maybe we're done with the animals. We're gonna keep them out for one more week and let's see if anything happens while we're gone. And then hopefully brand new 2024, we will be starting fresh with something. Um, so when you see this video, Christmas may have already Pass. I don't think that I'll post it actually on Christmas Day. I'll probably wait until after that. But I hope that this holiday season, no matter what you celebrate, what you do, I hope that this holiday season, this time off that you probably have from your jobs and work and everything else, I hope that you spend it with those that you love and those that love you. I hope that you have an amazing, amazing end of year. And y'all, if God's willing, we will make it to 2024 and it'll be time to re-energize, refuel, refresh for those of us who are growing winter gardens to keep going. And for those who did not grow up following winter garden, it's time to start thinking about the summer garden of 2024. Now that gets me excited. So be looking for content very, very soon. Talking about planning for 2024, ordering seeds. I hope you already got your seed catalogs. I got mine. I'm taking them with me on vacation. That's when I get a chance to just kind of decompress and be able to look in peace and get my mind focused on that. This hustle and bustle I got going on right now, I can't really focus on that. But you, you better believe coming soon we'll be talking about the planning for 2024. Thank you guys for joining me. If you're brand new here, I would love for you to subscribe. If you've been lurking in the background and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Be a part of this community. Remember, garden is a journey. Let's grow together. I'll see you next time, friend.